I saw your um, Padlet about the kidney thing. Yeah, the kidney really hard to know um, some of the kidney stuff. So yeah, I'll uh, let me get. Uh, if you have specifics, I wrote you back in terms of the naming of the Lupo Henley, kind of when it goes into the, from what I remember, or I'm not, a, I, I didn't look it up and confirm, but it's when it goes into the medulla. Okay. And that note is in, if I look at the grade for that, or how do I see that note? What do you mean note? Oh, you, I thought you said I left you a note. Oh yeah, on Padlet where you no, I can just tell you uh, where you said that the naming and and my understanding is it's it's when it changes from cortex to medulla, it okay. when we change the name from proximal convoluted tubule to lupa handling and then this will convoluted tubule. Okay, yeah, that's I think that was a question, right? Did I get that right? Yes, yes, yep, that was it. Okay. And then I, I, I think, hi, Vinny. Um, and where was the sort of in this description, I guess. Do you see that? So it's like this. Okay. Yeah, the, that's a good. Numbers, right? That's okay here. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's from your PowerPoint. It's not in the book, right? No, that's in the book, not in the PowerPoint. Wait, well, this... it's in the video, but it should be in the book. Huh. I don't have a book with me, unfortunately. I don't know what page. Okay. Let me look. It's in book six. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. It's right here, page 58. Um, huh. Why did I? Okay. I mean, because when I'm doing the coloring, I definitely have the book open. That's what you know. Yeah, yeah. That's part of the. Word. That's part of the process, right? Well, yeah. the thing. Hey, you know, that's the thing. This is all so complicated, so com yeah. so much. It's not complicated, really, but so much. Yeah. You yeah. know, we're missing. I mean, when I read my books and go like, "Oh my God, did I miss that spelling? How did I miss that?" You know? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I, I need to do a version again, but you know it's not going to happen. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. The kidney well, is a, really. That's interesting. Okay. Kidneys, right? I mean, the complicated. To me, other than that little, you know, not little, the microanatomy gets complex. Obviously, especially then we get into the. Um, well, that's the bigger, but we get into the blood vessels, the naming, yeah. all of that stuff. But then what's really kind of complicated, fascinating in some ways is that it's the whole exchange of the salts or the ions. Yeah. And they pull water with them and how that balances out sort of active passive mechanisms. I always find it interesting how the body uses active processes to establish passive processes that then function sort of automatically to fine tune yeah. things. It's kind of interesting. Like the nerve impulse is like that, you know, the actual nerve impulse is a passive open and closing. I mean, the, the gates open, close, but then the exchange of the ions that carry the nerve impulse is a passive in and out of ions between the nerves. Yeah. So that's kind of, you know, seems to be a theme to go through the body like that a little bit. Yeah. And if you go into deeper studies, then this gets more with, you know, sodium also chloride. It gets a little bit more intricate, but it's a good first start. And basically what happens here, this is as we get from the cortex into the medulla, and the deeper in the medulla we get, the saltier it gets. That's this 1,200 number, 600, 300 number here. Yeah. And so the saltier it gets, then um, the water gets pulled out of those... Um, uh, those segments as as close as deeper as they go because the the inside is less salty the, the, the filtrate itself so it wants to balance out with the salty outside so it pulls all the water out like when you do a, a, the, the salt on a tomato kind of thing um how that salt can pull the water out and the interesting thing is it does that on the descending arm 
And on the A standing arm, it actively carries out the sodium and chloride here that then to establish that gradient of saltiness. So that's kind of that tricky part about that, you know. Does that make sense? Yes, that's very helpful. Thank you. And so if I have that foundation understanding of it, I try to plug everything in. So that's, you know, that's so basically, you know, me going through Cairo school and then doing this stuff for a while. And then, so that's sort of, to me, the essence. And then I can extrapolate as I build up on knowledge around it sort of thing. Yeah. Because it gets complicated, but we don't have to look at it complicated if it's just because it's a chemical thing, you know? So if you understand that much, you're, you're good, I think. For my purposes. Oh, that's yes, all. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So that's what I wanted to still talk about that. I kind of like this slide where it shows the podocytes, how they're really clinging around the glomeruli, the little um, um, capillaries here uh, in the glomerulus in there that, um, or we should call it the Bowman's capsule really at the end or glomerular capsule, but the blood vessels here coming in. And then, and then you have this, this, um, uh, this 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 podocytes making sure not everything gets squeezed out from the blood into the filtrate, but it's filtered and the big stuff can stay behind, and that's done right here in this situation. So that's kind of interesting too. Um, are you so that's what talking about? Yeah, sorry. So this black and white photo in the top right corner, that's what this drawing is on the yes. bottom left. Wow. That's cool really what that looks like in reality when we blow it up whatever how many times yeah. and when we look at where we're talking about fundamentally speaking we're talking about this here right this corpuscle here on the inside how do we filter blood coming in through that system that we create all this filtrate that we can basically filter the blood right in reality right it's our mm -hmm. blood filtering system mm -hmm. um so it's kind of interesting and that's really the blowing up version of how that happens yeah very cool yeah it's totally fascinating yeah. so that's the other thing here and then and then of course i i always like this picture it's kind of like you look from below upward into the from from invert that that the, the medulla upward towards the cortex you know and so it visually just sort of i mean that's kind of the cool part about these days we have all these visuals you know? um the other thing that's fascinating with the kidneys i think is the fact that um we have the the, the blood volume balancing is in the kidney obviously and we can with two hormones figure out more of the water balancing and one is the aldosterone and the other one is uh, the rain and industrial um, uh, angiotensin and aldosterone cycle um where, where, where the, the 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 glomerulus blood area where, where, where's that do i have that picture here somewhere maybe i don't in this class by the glomerulus there is a little apparatus in this area that picks up how much pressure is in that blood vessel. And then depending if we need more or less blood pressure, it secretes renin into the bloodstream. And then that goes and gets converted in the lungs actually with an uh, angiotensin converting factor, uh, enzyme, I think, um, or F. It could be an F or an E. I haven't looked it up, but then it goes from uh, that into angiotensin, angiotensin one, two, angio means vessel, tensin means tensing the blood vessels a little bit. And then, and then from there, it gets into aldosterone and what aldosterone does in the kidney, it secretes, it secretes um, 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 so, um, sodium back in. I'm trying to find a slide where that's on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here it secretes sodium um, um, away from the filtrate back into the bloodstream, and that makes blood follow or water liquid follow back into the bloodstream. And so, therefore, we can raise the blood pressure if we have low blood pressure. So that ran and angiotensin cycle. The cool thing about it is it's 
it gets stimulated in the in the in the glomerulus where the can you stop that Austin? Thank you. In the glomerulus where the blood comes in to figure out what's the blood pressure, and then and then it gets secreted into the bloodstream, gets converted into angiotensin to squeeze the blood vessels a little bit, which raises up the blood pressure because it's a function between volume of blood and how much volume of space is there to how much pressure there is, right? And then if the angiotensin gets converted to aldosterone and the aldosterone assures that we retain more salt and therefore more liquid and it raises the blood volume up that way. So that's yeah. kind of, yeah. uh, that's really, again, the essence of that way, you know, then it's all technical language. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting because I'm taking anatomy and physiology too, and we're just doing a whole thing. Um, no, sorry, I'm taking pharmacology mm -hmm. and we're doing diuretics. So all about the kidney, but it's in the heart chapter, you know? So it's so interesting yes. to think like your kidneys, what do they have to do with your heart? But <laughs> they blood control your blood pressure. Yeah. yeah, so interesting. So interesting. Yeah, yeah these two classes have really been overlapping for me because okay. so much. Uh, we're doing reproductive um, farm in our next chapter and with you and yeah, it's been great. I should take that class. Which class is that? So, well, it's at um, City College of San Francisco Pharmacology. Um, it's a prerequisite for the LVN program, but it's so, the teacher's really good. It's very, very interesting. Really? The teacher is um, Jean Lansang um, at City College San Francisco, and she's she's an RN. Actually, she has her PhD in nursing, so she works, but then she also teaches. And um, nice. so so interesting how it overlaps, yeah, with anatomy. Yeah, no, I mean we can, you know we can't talk negative about teachers, but we can certainly talk positive. About <laughs> yeah. Games to go there and because we, you know, we, some of us are going to take that class. Maybe is it online or in person? Um, so it's online, but it's synchronous every Thursday okay. morning. Um, okay. But yeah, I'm going to check that out because I I had pharmacology in Cairo school, but you know that's a long time ago. I'm not really necessarily fully that interested, but it's very important yeah. to know these things. And uh, and it's. It's an online book, so there's a lot of stuff you can do online, like sample quizzes and little videos, and and I the see. online book I think is really good too. And what's yeah. the what's the the credit number on it? How many credits is it? Three, three. Okay, cool. I think. So it's medium amount of work. Yeah. Well, that depends. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's a little side. Thing here, the other way we can control the blood volume with hormone is the anti P hormone, the anti diuretic hormone, and that directly takes liquids and waters and and has these aquaporins on this side here that let water go back from the filtrate when it's yellow, it's P, right? Filtrate back into the bloodstream. Um, so that's the other way. So we control the blood volume with the, the salt, pull the salt out of the filtrate and the water comes with it. And we directly can bring the water uh, from the filtrate back into the, and that's mostly in the collecting tubules, uh, back into the bloodstream. Because at the end of the whole process, we do that fine tuning. Most of the water, uh, mo most of the blood gets squeezed into the filtrate about ninety percent, but most of that goes right back into the bloodstream, and that's passive processes. That's that salt stuff we were talking about, um, um, and that's the filtering process, of course. But then here with the aldosterone and the and the ADH, the NTP hormone, we can fine tune the water volume in the blood, which then you know ultimately is more has to do with the blood pressure versus filtering the blood part. Um, um, the other thing that we can feel how that influences is drink a bunch of water and drink a bunch of coffee. You're going to go pee right away because that hormone, that, that hormone, the anti P hormone doesn't work or it's not in the bloodstream. When we have coffee, caffeine in the system, it can be T2 or whatever Red Bull thing, um, 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 as well as alcohol. That's the other thing. So that's why, you know, in a beer bar, you want to make sure there's a toilet around. 
Um, but that's how you can feel when that hormone doesn't work of what it does in, in essence, which is kind of interesting. So that's what I wanted to say to finish up about this water balancing thing, which is kind of cool. I think that closes out that chapter from my perspective mostly. If you have any more questions, I don't know. It's pretty. The rest is anatomy, physio is that kind of what we talked about in essence. The anatomy, mostly, I assume it's straightforward for you guys on less exact how we talked about it before. So then the other chapter we did is the nutrition. I don't know. That's pretty straightforward, I think. Any thoughts on that um, chapter? No? I always like this picture. You. The strawberries and the you know, Oreos. Unfortunately, I like this picture. And I also like this picture. The high amount of calorie we use doesn't matter how big you are. <laughs> well, I guess it does, but you know the amount you need uh, is also dependent on work. And then this picture, of course, I'm always surprised how much protein is in vegetables. I'm like, how did that happen? I never thought that was the case. I always thought we need meat to meat, but then I met a gorilla in the zoo and he told me. So I went to do some research. And then the other thing that we need to just be so mindful of is the need for good fats. And I just want to never, I can never urge that enough. You know, avocados are great. Butter we can handle. Lard, no, even lard. But um, um, margarine, don't even touch that stuff. I'm sure they have better ones now, but be very careful about this engineered kind of food stuff. You know, go back to Julia Childs and eat some butter. I'm sure we'll be all right with that. They're actually going to have a cooking show on TV that is based on the Julia Child stuff. So I got to watch that because I love that too. You know, I love Julia Childs because she she eats or she has the butter in the cooking so, and she made it to her 90s. So I'm not really concerned about it. But if you are concerned about make sure Go for the avocados. Don't go for no fats. That's the challenge, right? That's very important. Um, you know, interestingly enough, they 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 they, de they depressed um, they depressed the knowledge about margarine versus trans fat versus versus saturated fat and how saturated fat yes clogs the arteries, but trans fat increases the inflammation, which is not really helpful apparently at especially post-60, from what I understand. And I listened to that in, 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 in a podcast from, I forgot his name, it's called The Basement Tapes. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up if you guys are ever interested. He's a really interesting sort of journal-y, research -y kind of guy. And so that's uh, where butter becomes back to like, you know, we got to think about that, margin versus butter, if we're still in that thing. So anyway, just keep your minds open. And when you look at the ingredient list, if it has too many words you don't understand on there, just don't get it. Just leave it alone. Um, and and Toblerone is Swiss chocolate, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the, the thing with Toblerone that's really funny is, is, is uh, oh, on Saturday, I just, real, I just learned that one of my old, old, old patients that was years ago, was a violinist for Rick James. I'm like, who is Rick James? I took that out. <laughs> but the Toblerone story is funny because when my, my first wife and I were in Switzerland, we were massage therapists. We went to some family friends of my parents' uh, house who hosted some other family friends of my parents that their name was Tobler. And I knew them from being a little kid. And my wife, my wife then, she's like, Oh, like Toblerone, they're the Toblerones. I'm like, no, no, you can't say that. They, they are. There's a lot of Toblers in there, in Switzerland. You got to be careful about that. And of course, they were the the the, the dad of the guy we massaged was the Mister Toblerone. I realized I never knew that before, so I figured I got to put it at least in my booklet. You know, um, yes, very good chocolate, of course. And you know, the interesting thing is, if you like to get a new routine started and you need to exercise in the new year. Get yourself some chocolate and eat it after you exercise. A little piece. That will make you want to exercise again. They have proven that apparently. And I don't think that was a Swiss study. That was not funded by the chocolate industry. 
Uh, and <laughs> the other thing that's interesting, I think, in this chapter is really the sugar spike stuff, too. I mean, you know, uh, be mindful. I think this is a good one to be mindful of. <laughs> How much do you drink in calories is a really easy way we can sort of cut it out. And maybe flavor our water was, you know, I don't know, something else, but not necessarily like all that sugar and Coke stuff. You know, once in a while, maybe, but. So that sugar spike is kind of interesting. And then lastly, uh, maybe the vitamins, um, <laughs> mineral section. You know, for me, it's really hard to always remember these things, which one is which. So that's why I put put a couple of a couple of tables in here, uh, uh, you know, that you can reach back in the booklets for if you want or so. Uh, but it's it's good to have these uh, understanding, baseline understanding of what these things do. If if for nothing else to go like, oh, I better eat some of that stuff, or I better get my kale into my system or so, you know. So that that at least at least that. And then for me, always um, when it comes to you know free radicals, antioxidants, and stuff, is the fact that if we actually eat real food, not just like synthetic vitamins or whatever it is. It's probably better because we eat a whole spectrum of things that we don't necessarily all understand yet. But, you know, 100 years ago, they also thought they understood everything. And, and we may do the same thing nowadays. And so we've got to be, I think, fairly humble about that. And I think nature is always the best cure for for this nutrition stuff. Are you and, are you familiar with the author Michael Pollan? Yes. OK, yeah. Good little guy. His his. Seven words about how to eat. Eat Say food. It. Eat food, not too much, mostly plants. There you go. So it's you those go. seven words. So like, eat food. Don't eat fake stuff. Eat food. You know, well, not, not too much. Mm -hmm. Everything in moderation, mostly plants. And in the and and in the um in the grocery store, avoid the middle. The middle aisles. Yes. Oh. You know, that's where the frozen stuff usually is. Uh, okay. Or yeah. at least in the design, mostly in that same way. <laughs> uh -huh. well, I think they do it that way because it's the way it's fridged or whatever it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's not. And the other the other one he has that I like a lot is, is, is the ingredient list. If your grandmother didn't understand an ingredient, don't buy it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. If your grandmother, yeah. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's a Berkeley guy. He's really a good one. Yeah. Um, he's an interesting one. Gosh, the other day I met a person who, who works on AI and he works on the next generation and they're working on really recreating brains, not just scamming the internet and getting everything from the internet and filtering that stuff, but doing original thought. Like, oh Lord. <laughs> he said he has it in his head, but he's got to write the, write the code now and then test it. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> Crazy stuff. But anyway, that's a different topic. Um, what else we got? We got this week, and that's pretty good because we did the pathology project. You guys did great. That was really, really good stuff. I'm really impressed with everybody's work. I gotta work, I gotta work a little bit on how to um guide the, the videotaping, I think, a little better, but that's my stuff. I have to work that on that. So then let's see, where's my safari? Uh oh. You guys have any questions? No. Okay, then let's finish up. Oh, where is my class? No. Yeah, that should be it. Fall 23. Oh, I got to do in the, in the curriculum sort of committee thing, I got to describe three assessments and evaluate everything that's what i had open ears like ugh, it's an oy vey situation for me doing that kind of stuff but it's actually interesting anyway this week is the last week of instructions look at that we're almost done and we have little left we're going to talk about repro system so that's a lot of a lot of the anatomy about the female and the male reproductive system and organs and the secretions uh, uh, there that then mainly deliver the gametes and the guys and uh, receive the male gamete in the female. 
reproductive system. And then mostly what we have is how we got to make these little, you know, almost baby things. Uh, and the eggs and the sperm. And we talk a little bit about in the, or, yeah, about ovulation, menstrual cycle, fallopian tube. And, and, and I mean, they're, they're in the women and in the guy more about how to make the sperm um, uh, and then how it is delivered. So you go through that. And a lot of the other stuff is anatomy. And then the chapter that I'm much more interested in, I think, is embryology, because I think you should keep that chapter in your book handy and show it to any guy if you know you have a be pregnant because they need to know what's going on and and often they don't so that's why it was very important to me to put it in a class where i have a lot of, a lot of young people that i teach because and that was one of the motivations actually <laughs> because you, you know it's sometimes really hard for women going through pregnancy if the guys have no idea what's going on uh, so we talk, you know, a little bit about fertilization, implantation. We talk about the placenta, the development of the embryo, and then um, <clears throat> the fetus. Then we go into the birth, and then finish up with a little postnatal um, uh, discussion of what happens. <clears throat> a lot on the on the canvas shell is 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 writing in the book. It's all the pictures uh, that I have there uh, that I really like. That's why I. I can't put the pictures online. It's a little bit problematic. So that's why the book. Anyway, and then we have, of course, questions to those two chapters. You should be used to it by now with those. And then we do a little labeling. These two don't have in um, videos on them yet. That is always that these are always the chapters in the classroom that we don't get to. And so, and so uh, I never made videos in terms of in-class stuff on those. I'm sorry, I'm a little behind on that. Uh, but the repro system, we label a little bit. And then to finish up, we are... Didn't you guys do the caring survey already? No, that's... Yeah, December 10th was the due date. Okay. So it's, it was available okay. sooner, but it wasn't due until... This oh, time. okay. 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 Good, good, good. Then that was that one. That's why I got a lot of those. Okay, great. And that's it. And and the food journal is just a discussion to finish up. And then please, this is not going to be a reflection of the week, although of course you can reflect on the week. But I like if you could, you know, reflect on the course a little bit, if you have any ideas to make it better or thoughts, um, that would be great here because after the semester, I'm heavily going through those and, and, and trying to go through the course and, you know, make sure we take all the little mistakes out or bigger mistakes, um, for example, as well. So if you have any suggestions, please, please put them in there. And of course, please, you know, rate the course on Rate My Professor so other people can find it. Because I tried to do a little more unique uh, in terms of integrating then straightforward. And I think it's important stuff i personally think but that's just maybe my ego talking who knows anyway any thoughts on you guys at end sure. no can... i had a quick question and i'm not sure, maybe you don't know the answer so after the course is over can i go back in canvas and see all the stuff we've done after the course is over oh yeah yeah, because I, I'd like you to know, have... I think so, but I have to. I, I do you know? Maybe you know a little more about that, maybe. Um, because I think I can say I want that, but I don't know how long they leave it open. Mm -hmm. It might depend on your affiliate. Obviously, it's going to depend if you're a student. Yeah, that's definitely yeah, that, yeah. that's a good question because I I do want to keep your material because it's very helpful for me <laughs> for working. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I I know that like in the summer, the course that I was taking, I was still able to see it early fall. And now, um, you know, let me let me check. <laughs> we uh, yeah, because think of that. I mean, obviously, we can keep your booklets, which are great, but a lot mm -hmm. of the other stuff I think will be really. I know I would refer back to it, you know, in future courses in the LVN program, but. Like what stuff? Oh, just 
the anatomy stuff and the um oh, yeah, I, don't know. I, I can see oh good i can see my course from the summer um where did i go i went to all courses <clears throat> yeah go to courses and then hit oh, all oh yes oh but you know what oh wow let me see if i can see something from 2020 <laughs> <laughs> It has all my enrollments, so let me. Ah. And yeah, I'm I not going to be. I know from the teacher side, but not the student side. Although, no, that's not true. I do know because I'm taking courses. I'm taking courses. Ah. So I certainly make sure on my side it stays open. Okay. But okay. Uh, no, not one, I'm sure, is a fact are you in a, a married or not, or at least Peralta, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and I won't and, be next semester. And then number two, the question is, what parts do you want? Because I have everything on paper or, or electronic oh. paper, basically. Oh, okay. Well, that maybe. Uh, base on those two. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll go back through after the exam or maybe during the exam or no, I mean, during studying. Yeah. Well, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Let maybe me think about that. Something. I guess I could do right screenshots or try to try to download some stuff too. I wonder if that would work. But again, I I created everything either paper and or of course electronic, okay. and then it went onto Canvas. So everything I have, I can probably get you PDF over. Okay, so you yeah, just let me... have to tell me what it is and and yeah. You know, and, and and I'm always around, and I'm ha I, I'm happy to do it unless it's too crazy. But I think <laughs> anyway, you know, because I was already thinking of at some point the health kit stuff I should put into a a format where it just can it's a file and everything goes out because some of the yeah. stuff like I want you guys to tell other people who are interested <laughs> some of the stuff. Yeah, you know, I feel strong enough now after twenty years of practice and all that that I feel like we need some of the stuff out there if people are interested. Yes, yeah, for sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll go through it and see um, and see that. Okay. Yeah, and that's for everyone who's listening. I'm here, my number's not gonna change. Once you've got my text, once you're a student, you can always ask questions. I'm always here for you. Mm -hmm. That's, that's so forward. nice, thank you. Yeah. Well, it's my mission. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. be a nerdy nerdy thorn in people's eye about health yeah. and stuff. <laughs> no i think there's so much here that i would use as as reference for for future courses for sure so okay well, good. yeah and then if you need to then just when it comes to it you just you know text me then and then we'll take care of it okay. at that okay yeah. okay yeah yeah don't worry but that's very important yeah that that the stuff if it goes away online it's i'm still i still can support you and get it to you okay thank you yes good well with that any more questions otherwise i'm gonna go wash my dog okay. yeah so just the exam so it'll open next week on monday and then we have the whole week um 15 15 it's a friday Yes, we do not have the weekend. We are closing on the 15th. Yes. So I think I have, yeah, I have us a Zoom plan next week in my head. That way we can do all the question stuff if you have questions. Oh, However, okay. if you want to take the final early, or no, 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 no. No. Okay. okay, so so one week one week from today you'll still have a Zoom at 10. I'm planning on it so okay. we have final questions if you have stuff okay. like that. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Okay. And okay. in between now also, you know, everybody who has to catch up and needs help, please text me. This is the last two weeks. It's good time to be now catching up. Okay. You know, discussion forums that you didn't get a full point because of a reply missing or so. Now it's good. And then I go through it and clear up on my end. And then at the end, we're good. If you're far behind, 
and still think you can catch up, text me today <laughs> so we can get a plan going. Because once the class is closed on the 15th, that's it. I'm done. I can't accept other than a few days over with pictures of labeling, but not quizzes and not exams or anything like that. No discussions. Everything is closed then. All right. Good. And tonight is our first, first, first last in person lab. Yep. So if you like to dissect your kidney, do we have kidneys? Yes, we have lots of kidneys. They're kind Good. of fatty. Huh? <laughs> They're fatty. <laughs> well, you know, oh God, that reminds me when I was in Borneo and they 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 got a wild boar, a pig they 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 slaughtered and it was like a rarity and they would eat everything. And I was like, for some reason, of course, I'm an outspoken person. I'm like, oh, fat cubes, I can't eat that. And when I wasn't looking, somebody's pushed me one into my mouth. I'm like, oh, my <laughs> and I had to eat it because it's a delicatessen. If you don't have enough food, that's the best thing to eat, right? It's most dangerous. <laughs> like, oh, my God, that was horrible. <laughs> anyway, we can cut the fat off for those kidneys. But uh, if you're interested in, in, in a dissecting and feeling how, it's interesting how kidneys feel to, to, to dissect them. It's an interesting tissue type, so I, I really appreciate it. So show up at six o'clock at Merritt. I'll send out a text. And um, with that, have a good week. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.